All right, everyone, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. My name is Eric Paul Zane. You can follow me at 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be breaking down this Tuesday four game slate. And this is actually one in which we do still have some injury news that is going to be enough to get us started for the slate and then also give us enough to kind of dial in who we should be on. And we just hope that the injury news that we already have on the slate doesn't change in which someone that's ruled out becomes active. Uh, but if that happens, remember, we got the Discord chat links in the description below, as well as access to any of the tools that you see in this video. That'll be in the description below as well. All right, let's get into the top picks for today. So as always, I do like to start off with that injury news, as you guys know. OK, so looking at it right now, we have Jamal Murray looking like he's going to be out. OK, he's currently doubtful. Got Cade Cunningham already listed as out. Ja Morant, game time decision, looking like he's doubtful. You got Joel Embiid listed out, uh, Maxi listed out, Bain out, <laughs> James Harden out, Jokic doubtful, uh, Bay out, uh, like just a ton of injury news. Isaiah Stewart out, uh, Jeff Green, that's actually going to be something worthwhile as well. He's out. And then Chris Paul listed out. I mean, we got a bunch of kind of slate impacting news. So I'm just going to get straight into what the model thinks are going to be the best value plays or value on the slate. And then we'll be getting into kind of the breakdown of that injury news and applying that news as well. All right. So who are currently the best value plays on FanDuel right now? Torrey Craig. And that makes sense just due to the injuries uh, going on in Phoenix. You got Chris Paul out. Makes sense. Uh, Craig John or uh, Cameron Johnson. He's out as well. OK, so Torrey Craig has been someone that has been popping up recently as a good price point play, you know, getting a bunch of minutes being a strong price per minute player, you know, at 4.9 on DraftKings, certainly someone you can look at. A little bit surprising where on FanDuel he's a little bit priced up that he's still gained that much love. So a good play across the board today. Jaden Ivey, $100 cheaper on FanDuel. He's going to be a strong price point play as well. So Jaden Ivey, with all these guys listed out, uh, he is someone that does get a big usage bump, about 30%. And that is DK per 36 uh, average is 43 DK points. But that's also why he got that per Big price bump, okay? Uh, should be a very strong price point play, like 35 DK points for you on the slate, um, especially given the matchup going against Denver with a bunch of backups. But he is someone I, I would be looking to play on the slate. So Melton, it's interesting because Melton is definitely priced up, but he really should be because he he could easily break the slate. And I mean, that wouldn't shock anyone. His per 36 DK point total with all those guys off the court, with Embiid off the court, with Harden off the court, with Maxi off the court is very high. It's uh 30 or 45 DK points. Okay, we just saw him go for 47 DK points in the last game. Really, that depends on if he's shooting the ball well or not. Um, I, I certainly think think he's going to be a good play tonight um just will he pay off that price point that's the biggest question that's the biggest questions that we have on this slate it's like all right these guys are a little bit juiced up price wise due to some injuries that are out there are they going to do enough to hit that price point because we know they are going to be good plays expected to get a big usage bump expected to get you know more dk points than they typically do but you know what's what's the difference there uh kevin herder popping up there as well okay price point play tyus jones uh decent price point play michael porter jr should be a better play he kind of struggled uh last game but he'd be someone especially if aaron gordon says that you'd be looking to play uh let's keep going here dylan brooks popping up there not bad as well um let's see here let's go to DraftKings value Tory craig once again Tory craig it's probably just going to be a player you're going out of your way to play. Aaron Gordon as well. Aaron Gordon currently questionable. Okay. If he does play, he is a stellar price point play on this slate. 5.6 is a very cheap price point for him. Uh, we can see he'd probably get around 30 minutes and has the upside to break the slate. I would expect him to go for 30 DK points with, you know, a floor of 25 DK points. He should be a great play for you on this slate if he plays. Okay. Currently questionable. I would expect him to try to play if he can. Um, you know, those other players are kind of out with that COVID stuff and whatnot. So he'd be a player that I would look to play, especially on DraftKings. Melton, once again, uh, Porter, once again, uh, Milton, a little bit better play on DraftKings. You know, I don't think you can really play him on FanDuel. Uh, DraftKings is fine. DeAndre Aiden on DraftKings. OK, we're seeing some price differences here. Uh, Aiden is a very strong price point play on DraftKings, uh, maybe a little bit too priced up on FanDuel, but gets one of the best matchups on the slate. Uh, he could easily go off as well. So now let's just look at the live odds. Which game should we be trying to change? It is going to be that Sacramento Memphis game. No surprise there. Memphis has been a team we've been trying to attack this whole year. It makes sense. And then Detroit, Denver, I kind of like as well, just due to stackability. Yes, Lakers, Phoenix should be a good game, but also stackability is not exactly there. Uh, none of the games are really, I mean, eight points is kind of a lot. You do worry about the blowout there and you worry, worry about the blowout in those two games. So that's why I like targeting these ones because it has the best chance to make sure that all the players get their uh, final rotation. And then early ownership as it sits right now, now, DraftKings, Milton, yes, he is, uh, you know, lower price 
there. That makes sense. Highland is a play that I absolutely love on this slate. Um, going to be someone I'm going on my way to play. That makes sense. Bruce Brown popping up there as well. Seems logical. Melton Jones, like it makes sense here, guys. And DeAndre Jordan as well. You know, going to be a strong uh, price per minute player as well as long as you get those mints. Should be a great play. Tobias Harris is someone I expect to be chalk once he's confirmed in. Um, you know, still pretty chalky as well. Obviously, a lot of these players are going to be higher owned on a four game slate, especially at the start of the day. Let's look at FanDuel, see which players are popping up there, and then we'll get in, into kind of the, the lineup process. All right, so on FanDuel, we do see uh, some more players soaking up some more ownership. Melton really soaking up a lot of ownership. Highland Brown, you know, those are the top plays on the slate. You got campaign a little bit cheaper there. That makes sense. Bogdanovich, I think, is going to be a strong price point play. You know, these ownerships all make sense. Um, Alec Burks kind of popping up a little bit more on FanDuel. He should be a very good price point play as well. Just kind of interesting stuff there. Um, no one too overpriced, I would say, or too high owned thus far. So good stuff there. All right, let's get into the lineup process here, and then we'll get out of, out of here for you guys. So in case you guys missed it, I do really like Bruce Brown. Should be a safe, like 30 DK point play. Maybe get you 36, maybe get you 28 points. But on this slate, I'm perfectly fine with locking in that floor. It's just a question of whether you want to play him at the point guard or a forward spot. For now, I'm going to put him in the point guard spot. And then Highland as well, guys. He is some and that should be a very strong price point player for you on this slate. Highland, with all those players off the court, has a usage rate of 33%, and his DK per 36 average is 49 DK points, or fan, or fancy points, I should say. Uh, so yes, should be a great play for you on the slate. Just need to make sure that he's active and going. So you know, those are the two easy plays I would say on the slate. And then let's find some other guard plays I like. Sure, if you, you want to pay up for Fox, you can. Uh, staying away from Kyrie Irving. Westbrook, I don't love. Um, you know, priced up a little bit too much. You know, we're kind of just forced into maybe playing Melton, and that's kind of my biggest issue with the slate um, because that's just kind of where the natural lineup path is leading you to. I don't mind Jaden Ivey. You know, just needs to get those minutes. Uh, 7K is a lot to pay up for him, but once again, probably locking in around 30 DK points. Um, you know, his usage rate with all those guys off the court is 30%. Um, DK per 36 is around 40, okay, with those guys off the court. Now, not expecting that, but expecting like 30 DK points, kind of a risk play, but a risky play, but also someone that could certainly pay off that for you. Uh, John Concher, I'm fine with two straight games of over 40 DK points um, or 40 DK points. Um, not a lock and load, and he is starting to get priced up now. So I, I like him. Don't love him. You can plug him in there for now, hoping that you make some adjustments as the day goes on. Yeah, Milton, a lot of people like just you know, trying to lock in 25 DK points. I would actually rather just go with Alec Burks, I think. Alec Burks getting about 25 minutes, should be getting about 25 DK points in this game. Um, maybe it's a slight bump in minutes or something too. You know, that'd be great. We can't guarantee that. Probably not going to happen, but if it were to happen, could easily get to 30 DK points. I'd rather just take a slightly cheaper play that is exactly the same to me that has a little bit more upside. Uh, so Alec Burks is not a play that um, I think we should be shying away from. You know, it has a high usage rate with those guys off the court, about 26%. Um, Averaging 37 uh, DK points per 36. Now, he's not going to get 36 minutes, but he could get 30 DK points and wouldn't be shocked. And then from there, nothing too crazy that's popping up, although Diallo is someone I think we'll be looking at on this slate. Uh, could get you 15 or so DK points, and that's really what you're shooting for. Once again, with all those guys off the court for Detroit, usage rate about 18%. Uh, actually has the most minutes with all those guys off the court as well. That's why I like targeting him. And then his DK per 36 would be 29 DK points. Now, once again, probably expecting more of 20 DK points. And let's see what the model is saying he's going to get. Okay, 17 minutes. So that makes sense. That makes sense why he wasn't popping up too much. I kind of think there's a chance that he gets to 20 or 25 minutes, you know, or so, and then he'd be a good price point play. Really, it just depends on the minutes. So once again, if you guys are an Occupy Fantasy member, come in here before lineup lock, see what his projected minutes are. If they're still the same, probably avoid him. If they're in the 20s, he becomes a great value price point play for you. So I'm going to plug him in there because I think that's what's going to happen. Although, you know, that could change. Now, looking at some other forward plays that you can be on on the slate, Dylan Brooks, I'm fine with risk reward type play, given the price point. Could go for 40 DK points. Wouldn't it be shocking? Uh, Bogdanovich should be a safe play for you guys. Uh, once again, if you want to chase a player that should have a high floor, that's going to be him. We can see very productive player. Um, once again, with all those Detroit players injured, there's a lot of a lot of injury news on the slate. But yeah, you know, a, a, a solid shoulder shrug play I always mention. Okay, so could go for 30 DK points, kind of expect him to, could pl plug him in there. Then obviously I do want to touch on Tobias Harris. If he's active, uh, he's going to be a player that I'm looking at currently probable. Um, you just expect him to really step up. His usage rate with Harden off the court, with Embiid off the court, and with Maxi off the court is 33%. Okay, that is going to be huge. 
Okay. He is someone that you expect to step up, although his DK point average doesn't really go up too much. So that's the worry. But, you know, he should, in theory, go for 40 DK points. He needs to shoot the ball well, needs to get some rebounds, but he should be the player that steps up the most with those guys off the court. And he isn't priced up too much. You know, it's kind of weird to say, I guess, but he, he, he would definitely be the best player on the court for them. So I would expect him to step up. And then Torrey Craig, obviously the best value on the slate. Do you want to try to find a way to put him into the build? Maybe you don't go with Bogdanovich. Um, maybe you don't go with John Concher. Uh, maybe you don't go with Diallo. So for now, sure, we'll go Craig instead of Diallo uh, at the forward spot because he's the one player that you want to go out of your way to play. Um, and then Jalen Dern, I, I want to mention as well, I think he's going to get you know around 25 minutes. And if he does, should be a 20 DK point play. We can see you know over his last few games now, four out of his five games have been over 20 DK points, which on the slate at this price point, I will take. And especially because he won't be matched up with Yoke or anything he'll be matched up with deandre jordan most likely deandre jordan's a player at center spot that you could go with i don't think we need to go out of our way to play him uh the center that i'm going out of my way to play on the state would be deandre aiden with that great matchup but once again i think the lineup path the natural lineup path is going to lead us to pay down um at that center spot so kind of how i'm looking at this slate thus far obviously we can make some adjustments as needed as the day goes on all right hopefully you guys enjoyed this coverage if you did you know what to do give a like and subscribe that helps us be able to put up more content for you guys if you want access to any the tools that you saw in this video make sure to click the links in the description below all right thanks for watching guys and good luck on this slate